Hi, this is Lynn from Gardening from Square One. Welcome to my garden. So I want to talk about the summer of 2023 because here in Central Texas and many places in the South, it was a doozy. <laughs> So I decided to take a walk around my garden to determine what plants fared well and which ones didn't. And um, I decided that I would share that information with those who are looking for plants that are tough as nails, that can handle high temperatures with very little water. And so, I walked around my garden the same way I did after Snowmageddon. Actually, after Snowmageddon, late winter 2021, so February 2021, I actually walked around the neighborhood and made a note of the plants that, that actually survived those low temperatures and all of that ice and snow. So this summer was a little uncharacteristic I think for us and so the first plant that I am focusing on is this gorgeous summertime blues vitex tree now to give you a little background information it is deciduous so all of these beautiful blue green leaves they will fall off um, once it becomes cold here so once we hit freezing but notice the beautiful healthy leaves the gorgeous lavender blue flowers it's about to have uh, its fall flush and so it will remain in bloom and hold on to its leaves until it becomes pretty cold here some plants really didn't fare well this is an example look at my lawn over there if you look at my grass you'll see what type of summer we had oh my gosh it's like <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna come back this is Bermuda grass and it's supposed to be one of the most heat tolerant grasses but I am questioning if this grass is gonna gonna snap back but when you can't water things um, even some of the plants that are supposed to be most heat tolerant, they, they succumb, they die. And so this particular plant that you see right now is rated USDA zone five all the way up to nine. Maybe even some of you in a zone 10 can grow it as well. The pollinators absolutely, they adore this plant. It is extremely healthy. Right now, I'm really enjoying the way the leaves are moving, moving in the wind. But point of reference for the size, I received this as a three gallon plant. Um, it was either late March, um, no later than mid April. And this is what it has become. Now point of reference, that wrought iron paneling is eight feet wide. It's about five feet tall. So this plant, in about six months is already as wide as an eight foot panel and it's probably about five and a half feet or so in height and so it's been a very vigorous grower the video that you see was actually taken during the height of the drought and like i said this plant receives zero or a small amount of water once a week all the way through the second week in September. Two of my three plants are in full afternoon sun from about 1 p.m. all the way until about 7.45 p.m. and they are not on drip irrigation. I also have pretty significant deer pressure and some rabbit pressure and I've actually witnessed the deer walking right by this easy to get at plant they seem to have very little interest in this in this summertime blues chase tree, which is definitely a bonus. This plant is tough as nails and it's gorgeous. I highly recommend it for those of you who garden in areas where it can get pretty toasty during the summer and it is um, drought conditions, so you don't water 
or you don't receive a lot of rain. So you see how beautiful this plant is in those conditions. This plant is definitely a superstar of my 2023 summer garden. If you like this video or you know someone who would like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. You can share it, click subscribe, notifications, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be the first to know. Plant two in my drought series is none other than Rockin' Playing the Blues Salvia. I purchased from Proven Winners, and it is it is considered an annual salvia, and so I'll be curious to see if mine comes back, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is the superstars of my summertime garden. And so this plant went into the ground during late April. And by July, so about three months later, we were on severe drought restrictions. At one point, we couldn't water outside at all. And so rock and plain the blue salvia is planted um, in an area of my garden where it gets sun pretty much all day. This, this plant gets at least, um, I'm going to say at least 10 hours of sun per day. In terms of watering, it received about a half a gallon of water every week. Um, and then at some points, didn't really receive much water at all because we went into pretty intense water restrictions. It has not stopped blooming. When Proven Winners wrote on their website that it is a continuous bloom or rebloomer, I can attest to that. I have had these beautiful blooms in my garden from sometime in May and all the way until now. So it's 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 full. And these plants are are just a, a, a sea of deep blue, purplish blue. Um, these plants are deer resistant. They are heat tolerant. They are drought tolerant. I have not done a thing to these plants. I mean, what you see is the result of, um, you know, I, I put them in the ground late April and all I've done is water them. There's been no fertilization. There's, like I said, it's been very little water. The pollinators absolutely love these plants. I mean, when I go out there and I look at them, I often see different types of bees. I see butterflies. I see all kinds of pollinators on this on this bush. And so um, I've even seen beautiful hummingbirds on this plant. Now, it's supposed to become 48 inches in height, and mine are not that tall yet. If I had to guesstimate, I would say they are about the, the two feet tall at this point. If they come back next year, I will definitely provide an update regarding how well um, they perform for year two. They are rated hardiness zone 7A all the way up to like 10B. And as I stated, I'm in zone 8, probably uh, 8B, 8A, 8B. And um, I have clay soil. And I just, I just, I have no complaints whatsoever. Trouble free. That's what I like. Trouble free, drought tolerant, heat resistant, deer resistant, and beautiful. Superstar number three for my drought series is none other than Sprinter Boxwood. So Sprinter Boxwood is rated zones five through nine. It's an evergreen plant as most boxwoods are. It can grow to about four feet in height and four feet in width. It is rated full sun, part sun, and filtered sun. Now this particular boxwood is supposed to be an improved winter gem. And as I said, I, I grow multiples of this plant of this plant in different sun exposures. And all of my plants are looking great. I have no complaints about any of my sprinter boxwood. But here's the backstory and the reason why it made the list for this drought series. So I had three 
sprinter boxwoods that we made near um, or just outside of a bed that was redesigned in late spring. My intention was to move the three sprinter boxwoods that were outside of this bed, but I only got around to, to moving two of the plants. So one plant remained in this area outside of a planter bed. Throughout the summer, this plant, which was on no drip irrigation, was often overlooked as we went around with the hose to water plants once a week. It became inundated with weeds and Bermuda grass. In fact, at one point, you barely knew it was there because some of the weeds were taller than the sprinter boxwood. When I had time to actually address moving this plant, I walked over there and totally expected to find a plant that was one, either dead, or two, a plant that was in horrible condition. And that is not what I found, which was a shock. Um, it looked a little dry, but beyond that, it, it appeared to be just fine. Plant number four for my trout series is none other than the Denim and Lace Russian Sage. So the Denim and Lace Russian Sage is a perennial plant that grows in zones four through nine. So many of us gardeners can grow this plant. It will become about 30 inches in height and about three feet in width. So a little wider than it is tall. Here in Central Texas, we will have blue flowers on this plant from spring all the way until the frost hits in fall. This plant is deer resistant. I have about seven denim and lace Russian sage and none of them are on irrigation. During this very, very hot summer, I just went out once a week, once every other week, depending upon if we got any rainfall at all, and give it a little bit of water, and that was about it. So biotone in the hole when I planted, a little water, and a bunch of Texas sunshine is all that this plant seemed to need in order to be happy. I use mine as fillers, but I've also seen them planted in mass along the edge of a border and they look absolutely gorgeous in that application as well. If you are searching for a plant that's carefree, that can handle hot temperatures, doesn't need a lot of water, that's deer resistant, you might want to give Denim and Lace Russian Sage a try. Drought series plant number five. Chef's Choice Culinary Roseberry is zone 7 to 10B. It is an evergreen, becomes about 2 feet by 2 feet. It can take the full Texas sun. It is drought tolerant, heat tolerant. The leaves are great for cooking, and it is a wonderful addition to an herb garden and a vegetable garden. It is known to help ward off pests on beans, carrots, and sage. So give this a try today. If you would like to hear more about the plants that fare well in hot and dry conditions, please like these videos, give a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and click notifications. Beyond that, have a great day in your garden. Bye!